What's happening guys, welcome to the United Stand and welcome to a bit more of an update on transfers actually. I know you guys have watched Mark's video on transfer news earlier today, but I'm here with my good friend James Cooper as per usual. We're here still working, aren't we? There's no, no, no time off, is there? Don't do the good friend thing. You sound like the moose from TalkSport. Don't do the good <laughs> friend thing. I don't we sound are, like we him. We are actually authentically good friends, so you're allowed to do it. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, so I don't actually have to say it and prove a point. People know. All right, no, fair right. play. Yeah, yeah. Manchester United, the transfer window. Yes, we'll talk about Bruno Fernandes in a little while, mm -hmm. but there's uh, a day, just over a day left. Striker, James, talk to me. Egalo, Slimani, Dries Mertens is someone who, who's been mentioned at five million. Dries Mertens, any, any possibility? I'll tell you what, I'd love Dries Mertens. I think I've been a fan of his for a long time. Yeah. I like him as a person, I like him as a player. He offers something very different to what Manchester United have got. So, I mean, I would hope that maybe they are looking at that and they've. But I, I just don't think they are. I, I just don't think that's going to happen. I think what they thought about doing was a short term deal. The problem then, I don't think they want to get the calibre of a player to come in. You know, you, if you say, come to Manchester United for six months, someone like, for example, Olivier Giroud, and I don't, I don't think he was an option, would mm. say, well, I want a, a year and a half or yeah, two and a half years. Oh, yeah. And it's a quick fix. It's not someone you want around for 18 months mm. or, a, or, or two years or something. So I, d I don't think that's going to happen. What they're also looking at doing is trying to bring one of their targets from the summer in early. And again, you know, I, I imagine that those targets are playing Champions League football and don't want to give that up either. So you can see the problems that they have. Um, the difficulty is the pressures on Anthony Martial and Mason Grieve not only to score goals but to stay fit mm. you know because an injury to one of those players and then suddenly you're scratching around but of all the kind of options I don't think Slomani was ever serious Igalo nah I'm not having that I'm, either I, I, I mean I know I know Sky reporting it etc and, and, it, and other outlets did is that just agents them. is that there some was, agents also trying to just look, drip I, these things through I know for a fact there was a chat about Igalo and there was oh. a chat about Slomani but I mean Chats become interest, becomes talks, become negotiations, become. Yeah. It's not, you know, it, I don't think it ever got further than that. You know, I think the problem for United was they had all their eggs in the Erling Haaland uh, basket early on in the window. How that didn't happen? I mean, you know, Solskjaer haven't had him at Mulder as well. You fought Norwegian. You just thought actually that will get done, and it yeah, was just more custard really pie. I, I mean, I, I've, a lot of people were pretty relaxed around the club that it was going to happen. They, no, I, no one said categorically, "Look, he's going to be a Manchester United player to mm. me," but it, they seemed relaxed about the process that was happening. Mm. You know, I think the problem was they were then surprised he didn't end up um, at Manchester United. He ends up at Dortmund. An indication no, to where we are right now, well, and the maybe, fact that yeah. Dortmund would be a more attractive. And, and what's made it worse, of course, is he can't stop scoring goals. It's like Hit an illness <laughs> running. Mate. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. just just incredible. So that's made the, the the thing difficult. I think they they were legislating for getting Erling Haaland in this window. Mm. That doesn't happen. Suddenly you're scratching around for options, and then Rashford get injured, gets injured, and it becomes even more mm. uh, important to do it. But. I think they are trying to do something, whether they can or not. I think it's a really, really tall order. But it was interesting that it wasn't just brushed off by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer last night. He kind of set the hairs running. But he has also mm. got kind of a mischievous streak because he knows by saying something like that, we'll be running around and talking about it. Literally, we, we literally are the next day. Doing, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he spoke about wanting someone who wants to break their nose to score a goal. And kind of, I took that as throwing a little bit of shade at Martial to say we currently don't have that in anywhere in our ranks. And we're going to work on it, yes. But he wants that striker, I, doesn't I think he? it's really hard. I mean, your, your background is kind of teaching before doing yes, this it is, yes. and and you know you teach children you say look learn 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 do what I'm saying and you'll, you'll become better at what I'm t talking to you about and it just baffles me that Ollie being a striker who's been we've seen the improvement in Mason Green we've mm. seen the improvement in Marcus Rashford why haven't we seen the improvement in mm. Anthony Martial? Yeah. the way we play because like yesterday for yesterday's game we said a lot of time hanging off the front trying to drop into almost a number 10 position when we've got the ball in wide areas he isn't making that darting run, that really burning desire to get in the six-yard box, get something messy. Is that patterns of play? Is that style of play? Or is it actually, it's not what Martial wants to do? Yeah, well, I, okay, whether he wants to do it or not, if he wants to be a number nine right down the middle, you've got to be doing those mm. things, you know. And, and Marcus Rashford has improved that part of his game massively. We know mm. about the finishing power of Mason Green, but I just don't understand why that kind of process isn't happening with Martial. And, you know, his ability to make a 50-50 ball look like a disaster yeah. by staying on his heels, not on his toes, just frustrates me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it does. And a lot of Man United fans will echo that. Bruno Fernandes. I mean, we spoke at length. I mean, in Perth, um, lovely it was out there talking about the same thing. Uh, our good friend Simon Peach as well. He was like, "No, I don't really think Man United are in for him." You was very not drawn on, you know, linking us massively to him in terms of our oh, Manchester United concrete in for him, and it, and it ended up that we we wasn't. We didn't sign him, only to come back into January. Long standoff here and there. Sporting wanting to up the price. United looking to pull out. Then Barca coming in. Absolute saga. But we've got our man, or he's having his medical as we speak. How did it come to that? 
<laughs> it's just an incredible process. I mean, I think he would look. I think he was on a list. Yeah. You know, we, we know about the scouting and recruitment, and Manchester United think they're getting that better. So I think in the summer he was maybe on a short list of perhaps eight to ten players. So they were aware of them. They'd scouted him. I, you know, got a kind of hankering that maybe Jose Mourinho was quite keen on him mm. as well. But that that was never going to happen in the summer. They had no uh, no plan to do that. They had priorities elsewhere. Was the money not there? I think the money, money was there. I, I think they probably needed to have a look at it and see what they wanted sort of further on down the line. And I think the problem is. You know, arguably, it, it, this transfer may have been brought forward from next summer, yeah, the summer yeah, to come, exactly. uh, because they need him now. You know, and I think it's massive pressure on a on a player like that. You know, we know what he can do. We know he can score goals. You know, he can create goals. Um, he's got a pass on him and a, and a good engine by the yeah, by the sounds yeah. of things. But all of that in Portugal, you know, and it worries me. I'm not sure how much of the Barcelona stuff was just a little bit of talk to get Manchester United to part with the yeah, money that, that, that no other big, big clubs have been involved. We know he's been around big clubs. Mm. We know he's played in Italy. We know he's done well in Portugal, but it's a really big ask because suddenly Bruno Fernandes hasn't got just any settling time here at Manchester United. He's got straight in. He's got, he now Matic's got a red card and all. Well, he might, he might <laughs> need to have Messiah or Saviour on his back just to lessen the pressure yeah. because it's not, that's not an easy thing. But I think if he can do something like he's done for Sporting Lisbon, right now it's better than what Manchester mm. United have Got. I think that's that's key to remember in terms of coming into a United side that is struggling creatively, struggling on a lot of fronts um, and struggling to be consistent. A player coming in January, any player coming in January is always difficult and it, it, can, it, can, it can be difficult for Bruno because rightly so, yeah, big price tag, a lot of expectancy. We are, as Manchester United fans, going to be expecting big things from him but we do also have to remember, get the balance right, that actually it is difficult for him to walk into this team and change its fortunes overnight. It yeah, can't it happen. Because, I mean, the word that everyone's using about your football club at the moment is toxic. Yeah. The atmosphere isn't very good. Mm. I mean, you know, someone suggested to me that what happened at Ed Woodward's house wouldn't be good for the transfer deal because Bruno Fernandes wouldn't want that. Mm. I, mm. I'm also led to believe that the transfer hadn't gone through, that the Sporting Lisbon owner would have had a similar thing happen <laughs> at his house. Yeah. And it is more common of that sort of thing in Europe. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Yeah. But it, and, and then on, on Saturday, if he makes his debut against Wolves, the stadium might be half empty mm. in the 68th minute when people are talking about walking out. It's, it's a really strange time and I've never known Manchester United fans wanting a signing so much mm. and the pressure on that signing to be good right from the word go because you're right, January, Manchester United traditionally haven't signed players and when mm. they have, they, they haven't settled in well. I remember, you know, Vidic and Evra were playing in the Manchester Derby. They had torrid times, wow. torrid times. You know, I thought I could have done a better job, to be honest. <laughs> and I thought, what have they done with these two players that no one yeah. kind of knows about? And yeah. then they turn out to be legends. So it mm. just shows you that, I mean, they didn't have the credentials. They turned out to be legends. Mm. He's got credentials, but he's got all the pressure in the world. Fair on. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's, don't speak it into the atmosphere. Let's let's <laughs> let's be positive. James is going to come. He's going to hit the ground running. On the walkout, the, the planned protests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I feel it's a bit of a weird time as well. You know, we've got it's the closest game to the Busby Babes commemoration. You know, we'll, we'll be looking at that. And now with Fernandez signing his debut, if it, if it comes to the 58th minute or 68th minute, and he hasn't come off the bench yet. Who's going to leave the stadium? Um, I mean, what, what's your thoughts on, on on what's been going on? Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one, and you know, I've said it on Sky. I you know, I, I think some of the behaviour that's gone on is pretty classless. I've got an awful lot of respect for Manchester United fans, and certainly mm. your football club. Absolutely. I think it's an amazing club. I said to you before, more ups and downs than any other club in the world. It's a tapestry, and it's a mm. tale that people are fascinated, whether it's in Manchester or on the other side of the world. But I think the way they're behaving, I think there's no place in in my football uh, for people talking about killing and burning people. Absolutely. And then what happened? the other night it's just disgraceful you know and if those guys are calling themselves Manchester United fans I don't think many United fans that I know would identify with that and I think that lines have been crossed mm. I, on the other side of things I can understand the frustration I know how difficult it is to go to you know, someone like Manchester City last night and, and, and see a Manchester City team that have been built brilliantly a, you know a, a club with a vision on and off the pitch and think well why isn't that happening at my mm. football club as well uh, I can understand United fans thinking that but I think they've got to kind of trust in the process um, it's not an easy one. I think it'll take an awful long time. And I think anyone who says it might turn around in kind of six months, I, you know, we might be talking about five or six years. Absolutely. It's like this. rebuild after rebuild, isn't it? I think it is, but they have to get it right. They have to get right at foundations. And I think, you know, when people look about what's wrong, what's gone wrong at Manchester United, I think it comes down to kind of recruitment, but not just recruitment on the first team level, recruitment across the club. I think other, other clubs have got their recruitment better. And I think the problem has been that I think the owners have provided money. Maybe it's not as much as they could. And yes, there's an argument they've taken an awful lot of money out of the club. But I think a lot of that money's been spent really poorly. Mm. And I think what we're hoping now, certainly from a, a, a perspective of watching United and, and hoping it, it, it's going the right way with the trajectory, is that the money has been spent better on Bruno Fernandes. Because the evidence of the summer window is that the recruitment is improving. It has to. But I think it's not just, as I say, on the pitch. I think recruitment elsewhere. You know, there's a, a, a talk about a director of football. I think a proper director of football would be great, but I don't think that's the job that's on offer. Mm. And to finish off, Solskjaer, I mean, you spend a lot, a lot, you're in every single press conference. 
a lot of Manchester United fans have, have kind of been a bit annoyed with the, some of the things that he says. They feel like it doesn't add up. Or not that he's lying, but just uh, have you seen a change in him with with the, the, the dip in form and the inconsistencies, etc., etc., the, the transfer sagas? Just from your point of view, have you seen a change of, of him in terms of some of the things he's coming out saying? You know, like, like the Sanchez thing. He's going to come back and prove you all wrong. Then saying... Um, we're looking at now short-term replacements after talking that we need long-term. Then saying we have made progress. We only we lost two 0 to Liverpool, but we lost three one the year before. Still a deficit of two 0 Just you know, Man City putting out a strong team shows we've made steps. Do, do you see some of what he's saying as odd, or do you do you see a man there who's actually grown into the role and starting to, to yeah, look you're, like? Yeah, you're, you're right. There, there is some um, ambiguities and some contradictions. <laughs> I think there's no doubt about that. I mean, I'm not going to make a case for a guy speaking in a second language because yeah. English is good and he's an intelligent guy. Yeah, but there are little things where you raise your eyebrow. I think certainly um, Alexis Sanchez coming back to prove everybody wrong. I think that was a little bit of mischief on his part because I don't see that ever happening. I don't see him having a Manchester United <laughs> He didn't career. even want to be. No, but, but that, that, that's exactly right. He wanted him out of the football club. But I think, you know, one thing he's got to do is have an asset that is saleable perhaps next summer. And talking him down doesn't help anybody on that. Mm. I, I think some of the things, I don't, I don't like the criticism about him smiling because I think he's a positive person. And he's yeah. always been someone who smiles, who, who looks positive. I think the way he explains is that he, he's the same whether you're getting beaten or whether you're you know, or whether you're winning, mm. he doesn't get too carried away was by. He was smiling at Jesse Lingard yesterday, was he? He certainly wasn't. <laughs> Blimey, talk about school teachers. Yeah. That was proper school teacher was, stuff. Yeah. But I think, equally, I think Manchester United fans want to see that. I think the other criticism of him that is that he'll stand on a, on the touchline and not do enough to change a game. And I think what you saw last night was the sort of passion that you want from a Manchester United manager. So you are right to kind of say, is it odd? Yes, there are odd things there. There are inconsistencies. There are strange ambiguities. I think sometimes maybe he doesn't need to say as much as he says. Mm. I think sometimes say a statement, don't give us a second ball if you're not sure about what you're going to say. Uh, and I don't think he's got used yet to the scrutiny of being Manchester United mm. manager yet, that every word is absolutely studied in detail. Mm. Uh, and I don't think that's really dawned on him yet. But I mean, blimey, he's got so many things where you look about so many issues where you think, I'm looking over there, there's something on fire. They're looking over there, <laughs> that's on I'd fire. I'd rather put too. them all out. You know, Especially the thing with the owners as well and the, and the Edward Wood thing. Not not the attack on the house, but in terms of when they were asking him and you guys were saying, you know, are you hearing it? What do you think? And he's like, we need to say United, we're a family. But he also went on to say, I think the structure of the club is good, is OK. It's, that, really, it's really hard. I sometimes don't know what people expect him to say, though. Yeah. He's not going to tear I'm saying just the professional. I, this is what I, I understand that you can't throw your employees under the bus and say, yeah, the way the clubs are. But he kind of went at Van Gaal and Mourinho and said they need to look at themselves. Since I've been here, I've been backed. And I just thought... It, it, to me, it, I, I'm, I'm saying politely, professionally swerve the question. Just say it's a long rebuild. We've got a lot of work to do. Let's stick together. But to say the structure is good makes me feel as a fan that are you then saying we're, we're wrong then? The structure of yeah, the club is hard. fine. It's hard because we, we want people to be interesting and say interesting, provocative yeah. things. We don't want to plan <laughs> things like this going to take a long time. But I think you're right. I think sometimes maybe there has to be a little bit more thought than there is. But again, I think that's an understanding of being Manchester United manager. Mm. I think... I still don't think it's dawned properly on him that, that, that that's the job he's doing. You know, mm. and, I, and I think it would take an awful lot of us a long time for that to dawn as well, simply because there's been so much work. It's not like when Jose came in or when Van Gaal came in or even when Moyes came in. You know, the, the club is in a different state. Mm. Um, and I think it demands an awful lot from the manager, a lot more than it did you know, under, under those three guys. Um, I would like kind of a bit more consistency. I'd like less ambiguities and con <laughs> contradictions. Some funny things he does. Yeah, yeah there, there is. And I understand the criticism, but can also see that you know, I know a lot of people want a narrative where the fans are starting to turn against them. I don't see that either. No, no, you know, it's, and not. I, and it's, I, it's all at the owners and, and Mr. Woodward. You know, I think that they're still backing and they're still singing his name and they want it to work for him. And I think, you know, that's the thing I think we have in common, perhaps as journalists in that room, to the guys that we're meant to be asking questions on, on the behalf of. I mm. think all of us want to see it be a success. No one wants it to become a car crash. We're just worried that it is because you can't predict it. Someone yeah. asked him last night, is it going to be the team that, that, that yeah. wins or loses? Which, do you know one? which is going to turn <laughs> up? None of us do. And, and, and until you have that kind of consistency, you can't know. But I think he has to be given, obviously, this window it looks more promising because Bruno Fernandes is coming in. I think, I think there might be four or five in the summer. Mm, I, think, got to be. I think maybe a, a, a utility fullback, maybe a centre-back, uh, another central midfielder, with or without Pogba. We mm. don't know about that as well. And then a centre-forward. Mm. You know, I think that that's at the bare minimum. And then perhaps we get to see what the Manchester United is like under uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. But I don't think he's been lucky either. Mm. And that's the other thing that people have kind of chosen not to look at. 
the injuries. injuries. Wow, that room is busy. Yeah. And, and they're not coming out of there anytime soon either. You know, we look at look Tom and they look at Rashford. You hope they'll come out after the winter break, mm. but there's no kind of guarantee on that. And Especially he's, Rashford's one. It looks and I think like he's played. I think he's played his first choice eleven what once or twice. Yeah. I think Chelsea and maybe Wolves. Mm. You know, so we haven't really seen what that they're about. Um, that's maybe making excuses. I can see people probably getting twitchy. They're going to get on it. They're going to be like, know. what about his in-game management? What about his tactics? What about our style well, of play, I, I our pattern of play? change a bit, but I think what was really interesting last night, to give him a little bit of credit, is that um, in, in putting out United in the way he did and the way they played, now not pretending it was good to watch because it wasn't, no, it wasn't, but he, he turned Manchester City into Manchester United as well. They, they were bad. They I, I, I did say that. I thought Pep would be in there saying that was awful. They were uncharacteristically kicking the ball out into touch, making silly mistakes, giving the ball away. But what frustrated me about that performance is the fact that, OK, City probably should have been free up within the first 15 minutes. Yeah, David De Gea masterclass, yeah. brilliant. But then from that, I think if we were well drilled and had that potency in attack, we could have put City to the sword yesterday because they were really poor. But we just didn't. The goal came out of nothing. I couldn't even believe we scored. Well, great finish, though. Great finish. Albeit he goes and makes a silly decision in the second half to he, undo he was that. Lucky with that yellow card, but then you yes. don't make the challenge if you are on the yellow card. As simple as that. that. I, yeah, I, I yeah. do get that. We can't. You, you can't moan about it. If you're on a yellow, just just don't do that. Correct. But we just didn't have that potency, that that clinical cutting edge to say actually, City are on the ropes here. We're, we're winning the ball off them, and they're giving us the ball. Let's make something happen. We, we just couldn't do it. No, and I think that's one of the key problems here. And I hope Bruno Fernandes maybe changes that in yeah. making them more of a threat. I didn't think there were any players there last night that City were scared of. In, no. the, way, in the way that Rashford can scare a team. There's yeah. no doubt about that. If, if Pep could have a choice of all the players, he'd bring in Rashford. Because he can do the unpredictable. He can, he can do the difficult stuff. Yeah. There was no one last night. And, and although, yeah, they lost 1-0, you know, they were holding United pretty much at arm's length, I think. Yeah, you know, and, and, and then, of course, the issue of the, the free kick at the end, where I think everybody... In, in the Manchester United then was expecting Juan Mata yeah. to take it and then suddenly he walks away and you're thinking well Fred and Pereira aren't going to put a shot on target let alone exactly. score but a goal. But Oli said that he and Carrick you know they're sort of saying you know one's the best man for the job but he's saying one's saying that in 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 in, 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 fire, and in fire and training I mean what surely matter has got to stand up be counted for he's only little yes but puff his chest out and was, say it, I'm the it, best it, man. It was just bizarre it was really really strange and it was odd that you know there were a lot of kind of foreign journalists like there coming up to us before the press conference saying why didn't matter take the free yeah. kick I said well that's the question everybody wants to ask yeah. and I don't think yeah the, the answer was an answer mm. but it I don't think it made Manchester United fans feel better no, about it did it, it? oh it Fred was great yesterday he took it yeah but it what about now? He's never done it in a game yeah. before. And when you saw that Claudio, Bra Claudio Bravo, where he was, there was an opportunity. He was hugging the post. Yeah, yeah. You know, so there's not, there's a lot that doesn't. Yeah. I couldn't believe that. Up. And to finish off, Pep Guardiola's comments on Solskjaer. He's doing a fantastic job. Unbelievable player. Well, Matic is unbelievable. He's unbelievable. Um, you know, Rashford. Uh, all these players. Oh, they were unbelievable. Manchester United are unbelievable. Fantastic team. Tongue and cheek from Pep, or does he genuinely believe? Uh, do you think that, that, that Oli's going to get this right? I think he's got a lot of respect for other managers. I think he says the he right things. Um, at the moment, I think he also knows that Manchester United and Oli, uh, with the greatest respect to both of them, the institution and the manager, aren't a threat to him. So he can say yeah, nice things easy, about easy it. It's really, really good, yeah, you know. Yeah, and absolutely. I think, you know, and it's, there's similarities to how it was with Pep and Jose Mourinho. We were expecting, as, as journalists, a real war of words yeah, between the two. Wasn't. And that never happened because, again, Jose wasn't a threat. Yeah. He couldn't come out and say this about that about Pep because he knew that Pep had the upper hand yeah. and Pep didn't care either. So I think there's a similar thing going there. I think it suits Pep Guardiola and Manchester City to see Manchester United in the state they're <laughs> the in. The way he was talking about matches, I thought he might have a last deadline day deal and bring I, him I in, replace Fernandinho. I think the last No, he has. No, he has. No, there's no agendas. He has. I thought he was going to be yeah. out this week. He was the forgotten man, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, uh, to be fair though, who knows? If Scott McTominay hadn't got injured and Matic continued not to play, then I think he, he might have gone. At, so, at something else, but I think yeah. he's, he's done. Been very professional. I think he's done really well. I think he's more mobile, fitter across the pitch than he's, than he's ever been in a Manchester United shirt. Yeah. And I think he showed he cared last night. Yeah, it wasn't the right decision. Yeah. But I think again, United fans want to see these players caring about the shirt and the results that they're that they're part of. Yeah. We're gonna get job done against Wolves. <laughs> I don't know Fernandez masterclass. I mean, they've not been great games, have they? The Wolves <laughs> no, games have been haven't. awful. Whether yeah. you're the one at the, at the start of the season or the two games in the FA Cup, not great watches. No. Um, and again, probably more to say. The, the difficult thing is, yeah, maybe <laughs> uh, the Wolves. I think are a fantastic side with a manager that, that has those players who know all their roles. I'm not convinced that Manchester United's players know their roles as well. Mm. Although I've got to say, I thought against. City, although it wasn't great to watch, they were disciplined. They were. They knew what they were doing. 5-3-2, yeah. You yeah, know, and, and trying to suck in the press and then lump the ball over like a Sunday league team, dare I say it. Oh, but, um, thanks, James, for reminding us. You know, yes. but, but you, you've got to hope 
Yeah. I hope that United breeze it against Wolves. I don't think they will. They're not making anything easy no, like that. No, and, I, and, I hope, and I hope with, with talks of walkouts and Bruno Fernandes maybe making his debut, that it's a day to remember rather than one where people are saying, blimey, it's another advert for yeah. Manchester United being in a mess. James, always a pleasure. Top stuff. See you uh, when uh, we, we go and sign uh, Mbappe in the last dying wow, embers of good? the January transfer window. Cool. That no? Wouldn't that be good? It would be. We're out of here, guys. Peace. Big thank you to you guys for watching the latest of our videos. And if you want to check out more, make sure you do that just to the right of me. We are the biggest and best Manchester United channel in the world. Make sure you check us out on all of the socials as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and YouTube. The socials are along the bottom. Peace.